preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. A pleasant good evening to you online viewers. Welcome back to another Sunday evening service where we can fellowship together and learn more about our Creator. Remember to like and share our Mission Life page via Facebook and YouTube so that others can be blessed by this evening's service. The theme for this evening's program is entitled, Is Time Running Out? Is time running out? Before we move further, let's put ourselves in the manner for prayer as we ask God's guidance for this evening's program. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all your blessings. Lord, as we come before you, we ask that you please forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for the online viewers at this time. We pray that you will bless them, provide and protect them, Lord. And as we are about to begin this evening's program, we ask that you send the Holy Spirit to be with us. Help us to be drawn closer to you and continue to have your way in our lives. Take charge and control. Have your way, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Singing plays an important part in our worship service. It fills our hearts with joy and it provides an opportunity for us to praise and worship our God. This evening, we have our choristers standing by to lift up the name of Jesus through songs. Good evening. Join us as we sing praises to God. Our first hymn is Come Christians Join to Sing. Oh 
same is hymn number 260. Come thou fount of every blessing.
thank you, choristers, for such a wonderful song service. God's name be praised. The greatest blessing that God can give to man is the spirit of earnest prayer. And at this time, Pastor Eustace George will now intercede on our behalf. Dear Lord, we thank you this evening for your goodness in our lives. You have been mighty good. You have kept us to this point in our experience. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Oh God, even as we call on your name this evening, we pray for your mercy and your grace to shower down on us, Lord. Show us your forgiveness. Oh God, we pray in a special way at this time as we worship you this evening. May the songs that we sing and the prayers that we offer bring honor and glory to your name. And oh God, even now as we are with your word, be with us all in our various locations. Bless us and keep us, keep your people attentive. And may this worship service this evening bring a blessing from on high. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are just joining us, remember we are here for a Sunday evening service from the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists on Mission Life Grenada via YouTube and Facebook. And we are looking at the team. Is time running out? Is time running out? Now, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 as we read our scripture reading for tonight. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Listen while I read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Good is the reading of God's word. As you meditate on the scripture reading, the Johnson sisters will now bless our hearts with a special in song.
Thank you, Johnson sisters, for such a wonderful message in song. God's name be praised. Continue to use your talent for the Lord. Online viewers, now is the time for you to share and like if you haven't done so as yet. We have come to the part where God has a special message for us this evening. And to deliver the word to us, we have Pastor Jerry Vincent, who will enlighten us more on the topic, Is a Time Running Out? Pastor Vincent, I now turn over the time to you. Greetings, friends. I have a message for you today, a wonderful message from the Word of God. It is entitled, Is Time Running Out? Now my intention is to ask you and answer the question, Is time as we know it running out? The scripture reading says, Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the star shall fall from heaven, and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Luke 21, 25 also says this. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the wave in ro waves roaring. Luke 21, 27 goes on to say, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. After the signs of the sun and the moon and the stars, the Bible says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Then Luke 21 goes on to say, now when you see these things begin to happen, look up. And lift up your head because your redemption draws nigh. In other words, do not look down. Do not look around. The Bible says you need to what? Look up. So one day Jesus, Mark 13, 2. One day as Jesus left the temple at Jerusalem. His disciples called his attention to its extraordinary beauty. What a wonderful temple they said it was. What a magnificent temple it was. Sadly, Jesus, my Jesus, responded that the day would come when they would not one stone shall be left upon another. Then the disciples became curious. What are you talking about, Jesus? And in Matthew 24, 3, they said, Tell us, Jesus, what will these things be? When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age? Then Jesus replied, Trace the events of the world history to the end of time. He began outlining the events that would take place during the next 39 years prior to the de destruction of Jerusalem. Jesus was telling them, this is what's going to happen before the destruction of Jerusalem. Next slide. Along with the warning that time is running out for the earth as we know it, he brings us wonderful news. So let's get the gospel, the good news, the wonderful news at this time. And Jesus says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations and then will the end come. What a wonderful text of scripture it is. Then Jesus goes on to say, for then there will be great tribulation." such as has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. 
Then he says, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. And for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. What is Jesus talking about? He says, unless those days were shortened, no flesh, no body, no human being will be saved. But for who? The elect's sake, those days will be shortened. What days? What days is Jesus talking about? My friends, he's talking about the 12, 60 year persecution of the saints from 538 AD to 1798 AD as written in Daniel 7:25 you see my friends the persecution of the church did not continue throughout the entire period of the 1260 years god in mercy to his people cut short the influence cut short the time of the fairy trial through the influence of the reformation the persecution was brought to an end prior to 798. So a little before the time, 1798, percu persecution was stopped. So that's why Matthew 24, 21, 22 says this to us. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. And for the elect's sake, those days will be what? Shortened. But listen to this. Matthew 24, 29 says, immediately after the tribulations, immediately after the church was being persecuted, something happened. Certain signs occurred. In the heavens, immediately after the tribulation, next slide, of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. You see, John the Revelator was shown the same event. That same event that Jesus was talking about. For John said, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs. When, the star, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. The Bible says a sign. There was a sign. There was a great what? Earthquake. After the 1260 year period. At the end of the persecution. There would be signs in the heaven. And the Bible says that there was a great earthquake. That was the first sign. The first sign was the great Lisbon earthquake. The 1st of November, 1755. Listen to me now. It is common history. You can read about it online. It happened. It was unique. Science could not explain Explain what happened in 1755. Earthquake of Lisbon had such a profound effect on the world that we are still feeling the impact today. Do you hear what I said? As well as devastating one of the most important cities of the 18th century. It shook the thinking of the time. You see, historians gave this account of the fulfillment of these predictions. For in the year 1755, on November the 1st, the most terrible earthquake recorded up to that time occurred, commonly called the Lisbon earthquake. 
the earthquake stru struck on the 1st of November, which was the holy feast day of all saints. On the day, the deeply religious Portuguese packed Lisbon churches to celebrate this important feast. The medieval construction of the churches were not designed to withstand the violent earth movement and many unfortunate worshippers died as the roof of the religious buildings collapsed on them. You see, it extended over 4 million square miles reaching America and Greenland. So Hales Lan gave this account of the earthquake. He said, a sound of thunder was heard on the ground and immediately after a violent shock threw down the greater part of the city. In the course of about six minutes, 60,000 people perished. The next event to take place in the sequence of the signs in the natural world is described by John the Revelator. And John said in Revelation 6, 12, 13, And the sun became black as sackcloth, as sackcloth of hair. Jesus also ushered, uttered these words, And the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. This was the second sign. The dark day, the 19th of May, 1780. The dark day, as it became known, took place in May the 19th, 1780, in New England and, pa and part of the eastern Canada. For the past 232 years, historians and scientists have argued over the origin of this strange event. The mysterious day dark day it's on the internet it's in the books it was a mysterious dark day it could not be explained historians wrote the dark day May the 19, 1780 so called an account of a remarkable darkness on that day extending over all New England. In some places, persons could not see to read common print in open air for several hours. Birds sang their evening songs, disappeared and became silent. Fowls went to roost. Cattle sang the uh, barnyard and candles were lighted in the house. The true cause of this remarkable phenomena is not known. Another historian says this, I could not help conceiving at the time that if ever luminous bodies in the universe had been shrouded in impregnable shades or struck out of existence, the darkness could not have been more complete. Though at nine o'clock, that night, the moon rose to the full. It had not the least effect to dispel the death-like shadow. It happened. It was the second sign. And Revelation 12, 6, 12, 13 says this, goes on to say, After there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, the Bible says, and the moon became as blood. You see, historians tell us that after midnight, the darkness disappeared and the moon, when first visible, had the appearance of blood. Did you hear what I said? Had the appearance of blood. The moon became as blood. You can also check this on the internet, on, on any media platform you want, or in the library. It, it's a known phenomenon that happened, but it could not be explained. Could not be explained. 
It was one of the signs that Jesus told us would happen before he comes. Back to Revelation 6, 12, 13. And John the Revelator said, After the great earthquake, after the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, the Bible says, And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. Did you hear what I said? The stars of heaven fell onto the earth. Matthew 24, 29, and Jesus is speaking. Jesus says, and the stars shall fall from heaven. That was the third sign. Do you hear what I said? That was the third sign, the falling stars, 13th of November, 1833. The falling stars. Once again, there were media showers. It is all documented history. You can read it online. It was a phenomenon that could not be explained. On November the 13th, 1833, Jesus predicted concerning the falling of the stars was fulfilled according to the American Journal of Science and Arts, volume 25, 1834. It said, the morning of November the 13th, 1833, was rendered memorable by the exhibition of the phenomena called what? The shooting stars, which was probably more extensive and magnificent than any similar one heretofore recorded. Probably no celestial phenomena has ever occurred in this country since the first settlement, which was viewed with such admiration and delighted by one class of spectators, or with such so much astonishment and fear by another class. The New York Journal wrote, no philosopher or scholar has told or recorded an event, I suppose, like that of yesterday morning. Are you getting this? A prophet, 1800 years ago, foretold it. Exactly. Did you hear what I said? Foretold this was going to happen. Exactly as it happened. The first sign was the great earthquake, November 1755. Then there was the dark day. The moon became as blood. May the 19th, 1780. That was followed by the falling stars. November the 13th, 1833. It happened, as John the Revelator said, it happened as Jesus said. So let's look at it again. Revelation 12, Revelation 6, 12 to 13. And there was a great earthquake. It happened. And the sun became as sackcloth. It happened. And the moon became as blood. It happened. And the stars fell from heaven. It happened. As predicted. These were documented. Very strange, unexplained, phenomenas. In other words, they do not make no sense. They cannot be explained by science. Did you hear what I said? It can only come by the hand of God. So what does the next verse say? The next verse says, verse 14, Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place and the kings of the earth the great men the rich men the commanders the mighty men every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks 
fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who is able to stand? Did you hear what I said? Who is able to stand? What this is telling me, my brothers and sisters, the signs foretold has been fulfilled. The next event to take place in this prophecy is the coming of Jesus Christ and the end of the world. So my friends, I'm telling you today, the handwriting of God is on the wall of time. God is trying to tell us that we are living in the last hours of earth's history. The time of the end, if you please. Now the Bible gives the warning of coming disaster and the end of the world just as Noah gives the warning to the people of his time before the flood. In fact, Jesus compares the condition on earth in the last days of those at the time of Noah. You can read it in the word. But as the days of Noah was, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, and marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will the sun in the coming of the son of man be. That's a hallelujah text. For the Bible tells us that as it is in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the son of man. So for 120 years, Noah witnessed the coming destruction by preaching and building an ark. Of the vast population then living, sadly, only eight people, eight people survived. And because God had fa failed to give the warning. Not because God had failed to give the warning, but because they failed to prepare for the day of destruction. So what about you, my friends? Are you making preparation for the coming of Jesus? The signs are all fulfilling, one by one. The signs are telling us that Jesus is soon to come. So in the book of Luke, verse 21, Luke gives us some admonition from the throne room of God, but take heed to yourselves. Did you hear what I said? But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with what? Carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And the day comes on you, what? Unexpectedly. Did you hear what I said? Unexpectedly. In other words, the Lord is saying to us, beware. Beware. Do not get yourself. Do not get yourself. Do not get yourself so caught up in the cares of this world that the day come upon you that when Jesus comes like in the day of Noah when the flood came the people were caught up in the things of this world They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. That when the first pitter-patter of rain fell down, they were not ready. But God is saying to us today, I'm giving you signs in the heavens and on the earth that you will be ready. 
Did you hear what I said? That you will be ready. So today, I have asked the question, and I believe that I've answered the question. Is time as we know it running out? What is your verdict, my, my friends? I believe the verdict could only be, yes, time is running out. Did you hear what I said? Time is running out for the signs of fast fulfilling one by one. That from the mouth of Jesus, the great earthquake happened. As Jesus said, as John the Revelator said, the dark day happened. As the Revelator said, as Jesus said, the falling stars happened. As the John the Revelator said, as Jesus said, the stars fall from heaven. And after that, and after that, the Bible says, Jesus will come. Jesus will come. So my friends, I want to tell you, I want to tell you this. Accept Jesus today. Accept the one who is soon to come to take his people home. The greatest decision that you will ever make, my friends, is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is not leaving your salvation to chance. He has repeated in his word the things that will happen before he comes. And like the song says, Lo, he comes. And he is coming soon. I pray that the message has resonated in your heart. And that the message will drive you to study God's word. Even as we pray. So eyes are closed and heads are bowed. As we come to the end of this message. Let us pray. Eternal Father. When your church. Was being persecuted. When your church was about to be destroyed, you stepped forth and stopped the persecution for the elect's sake. Then you gave us signs in the heavens and on the earth that we may understand that your coming is near even at the door. And we, Lord, who heed this warning, that though the world will be deceived, we will not be. Because it would not be possible to deceive the very elect. We have heard thy word. And I'm asking, Lord, that you'll take the hands of those who are listening tonight. Those are in the valley of decision, wherever they may be. Those who haven't heard this message before. Let the Holy Spirit work in their hearts to draw them, Lord. Draw them to study thy word. To do like the barriers to see if this is so. And if this is so, Lord, help them to stand up and be counted and accept you, Lord, as their Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Online viewers, what a message from God this evening. As we go through this week, I pray we will share whatever we have learned here tonight so that others will be blessed and come to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we close, I have a few announcements to share with you. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. Passcode 0138-0013. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner at 11 a.m. on Tuesday and a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m., followed by our Sabbath evening service at 4 p.m. Join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Life Grenada as we continue our Sunday evening service. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for a wonderful service that you have had here today. Lord, I pray that you will be with the online viewers as they learned about you this evening, that you will continue to bless them, continue to cover them with your blood, Lord. I pray that as they go through this week, that you will be with them, provide, protect them, Lord. And I pray that they will continue to focus on you, always have you in their hearts, Lord. I pray that you will show your blessings upon them, take charge and control, have your way in their lives. In your name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week ahead and may God bless you. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you need Worship Him in all the nations, in all.